Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to look at verses 16 through 17. 16 through 18. 16 through 18. Verse 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. The title of the message is Sin Starts When There's No Thanksgiving. Sin starts when there's no thanksgiving. Sin starts when there's no thanksgiving. The Bible says, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. Verse 18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus, we thank you once again for gathering us here in this Bible in church to hear your word. We ask you that you fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit, giving the authority, unction from on high to preach a word with liberty, to prick our hearts so that we can change for the better. Amen. We ask you that you you fill each and every one of us with your Holy Spirit. Help us not to think of the things that are happening in our lives, whether good or bad. Help us just fully focus on your word. Please protect us from devil's attacks. And for those who are listening online or watching online, pray that you'll be with them. And those who are not saved, pray that today will be the day of salvation. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Sin starts when there's no thanksgiving. No thanksgiving, giving thanks, being grateful, is contrary, is opposite of human nature. Even if you're a saved Christian, you are naturally bound to not give thanks. But the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, in everything give thanks. So you have to give thanks. And as a Christian, and as someone who's been saved for a while, you would know that it's the right thing to do. Yes, it is. But many times, you just don't do it. The preaching is not about learning about the newest doctrine, per se. It's not about going deep into the deepest of the you know, teachings in the Word of God. Yeah. It's more to do with your practical Christian behavior. God. You already know the answer, but are you going to apply it in your life? And when it comes to thanksgiving, you and I have to examine it on a daily basis. Amen. I mean, the question is, how thankful are you? Because that is a very rhetorical question. Yeah. However, if you're not a thankful person, you're already disobeying the word of God. Amen. And sin has already started. Think about it. Sin starts when there's no thanksgiving. What happened to Lucifer? Satan, the devil. Why? Because he stopped being, give, being thankful. And then pride got into him. So right off the bat, you know that if you're not a thankful person, you become a proud person. You want to know how to get pride in your life? Stop giving thanks. Then you become a, one of the worst human beings out there. Yeah. You'll be a proud person. Why does this country going down the toilet so fast? Because no one's being thankful. Generation after generation after generation, there, there's less thanksgiving that you see with the newer generation. Yeah. It's not just about the unsaved world out there. It's not about non-Bible-believing Christians out there. We're talking about everybody. Even Bible-believing circles, people are not thankful. We know the story in book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 15 through 18, where there's you know, 10 lepers. And Lord heals them. You know how many comes back to give glory to God and give thanks to the Lord? One. One out of ten. And he was a Samaritan. He wasn't even a Jew. Yeah. Half, half, right? I mean, that shows the Lord's grace, you know, that he will have on Gentiles. You know, salvation to Gentiles out there. Thank you, Lord. Spiritually speaking. But think about it. Leprosy is one of the most incredibly, you know, I mean, you don't want to go through that. No. And 
for someone to be healed out of that condition, you would think that they'll be thankful. But no. I'm like, you know, only one person came back and thanked the Lord and gave glory to God. Many times as a Christian, I mean, you might thank the Lord when you've gotten saved. Maybe at that moment. But how many times do you go to the Lord on a daily basis and give Him thanks for saving you out of your leprous, sinful state from out of hell? More and more time passes by, you are more thankful. You become more thankful that you have found the truth. Amen. You're more thankful that you're actually saved. Yes. You know, yesterday, you know, we had street preaching in the city of Irvine. You know, Irvine is one of the wickedest cities. It is number one for watching, you know, porn. It is just a dirty, dirty city. It looks clean. It has money. But what comes with it? Full of pride. They're not thankful at all. I was actually trying to pass a trek out to, you know, one of the Asian ladies walking by, and then she rejected it. You know, I just said it nicely, you know, you know, don't burn in hell, right? And then, and then this, this, you know, this white guy, Caucasian, you know, uh, maybe in his 40s, he just jumps into the conversation. I think that's the common, character, common characteristic of Caucasians. Like Jephthahs, they like to travel. They like to conquer. They like to get in everybody's business, yes. right? right? You ask, you know, Shamites. You ask a lot of, you know, Hamites. You know, they do their own thing. You know, they'll just leave it alone. Yeah. But Jeff dies. Man, they have to butt in. So this guy suddenly goes <laughs> out of the blue, right? You know, he goes, hey, you're going to hell. I mean, he just tells me because I had a sign. It says, you know, it's that illustration. That's why we do it during daytime. Very powerful. You know, someone thrown to hell for our eternity. Yes. And then I'm sure he got offended by it. Oh, yeah. Right? And then he's, he's trying to argue. I said, you know, I can't go to hell anymore. You know, I received Jesus Christ as my Amen. Lord and Savior. Amen. I guess it triggered him. He couldn't take it. And then he started cussing, using the F word and blah, blah, blah. And I just told him, if, if I'd gotten saved, you know, back in the day, you know, probably, you know, I would have exploded too. But I guess it's... Time passes by, you mature, right? Yeah. You don't need to deal with that in that way. And I just told you, why are you a child, right? You know, only children cuss this like that. I mean, you're a grown-up adult. I mean, there's no reason because you have no reason. So all you say is F word, F word, F word, right? And as he ran off, you know, he gave me the fingers, you know. I stumbled. I think he almost fell, but, you know. <laughs> and maybe Lord gave him a little bit of grace not to look like the complete, complete fool. But think about it. You know, the sad state is that he asked me, you want me to burn in hell? I said, no, I don't want you to burn in hell. That's why you need to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But I could have been that person. You could have been that person. There is no guarantee without the grace and mercy of God, with our sinful nature, we could have been just like that person, right? That's why you and I have to be really be thankful about our salvation. Amen. I mean, it's a, another reminder that, man, this saving grace, this free salvation that God has given to us through Jesus Christ and His blood atonement, yes. it's nothing to be taken lightly. No, sir. So usually human beings breathe for, take about 23,000 breaths per day. I don't know who they counted, but 23,000, wow. right? How many times... Out of those 20, 23,000 times that we take breath, we thank God for. Yeah. You know, when something takes our breath away, we thank God all the time. But for normal, regular, most precious, because we, if we don't have oxygen, if we don't breathe, we die. Yeah. We inhale oxygen and we exhale carbon, di- carbon dioxide. It is a complicated respiratory task. I mean, you need a physiological precision. So forget about all this evolution is, you know, things come by. Then no, you know, God put everything in place precisely. Amen. Then you and I should thank God for our breath. Yes. Oxygen. Yes. Every single day. Amen. I mean, if he takes few breaths away out of 23,000, if he takes maybe 3,000 away, and yes. if that's consecutive, I'm, I might die. Yeah. yeah. So we have to thank God. So just little things. But... 
Another illustration just shows how unthankful we are. And I shared this story in the past. You know, back, back in the day in Evanston, Illinois, there was a person named Edward Spencer. And there was a you know, ship accident in Lake Michigan, cold days. And he rescued 17 people and his health got permanently damaged, right? In the freezing water. At his funeral, it was found out that not one person came and thanked him for saving them from drowning in the cold, freezing water. Think about it. You know, one out of 10 is nothing. 17 people who would have lost their lives, this person gave up his health to rescue. No one thanked him. That's human nature. I mean, it's, a, you know, it's another story. You know, Dr. Ruckman had some classes. You know. Bible study classes, like a bunch of five-year-olds. And we're talking about a Bible-believing church under Dr. Ruckman. He gave out candies to like 15, 17 kids. None of them said thanks. But when one person started thinking, everybody said thanks. Right? Yeah. But that just tells you. I mean, are you that one person who's got to give thanks? Yes. But if you do, you and your family is going to start giving thanks to God. Amen. Whoever's around you, right? Yes. Hen Henry Ironside was giving thanks to God for his meal. And someone said, this guy, you know, he said, can I have a you know, meal with you? He came by. And this guy goes, you know, I don't pray to God. I do everything on my own. You know, I have nothing to thank for. And then Henry Iron said, then you're just like my dog. <laughs> you know, you're just an animal, right? Good. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, I have dog personally, and my dog is thankful dog, I think. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes you're worse than a dog. Amen. Man, you're just like a hyena out there. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah, just, you know, a bunch of people spoiled, just looking for things over and over and over. Yes. That's why you have to kind of realize where you are at. Right. There's so many things to be thankful for. There is. I mean, there's so many times where you and I should have been dead and God saved us. Yes. Amen. There's so many times you and I you know, should be out on the street, yes. but God saved us. Yes. So many times you and I should be in the prison right now, yes. but God saved us. Thank I mean, you, Lord. those things, the fact that you could hear you should thank God. The fact that you could see, you should thank God. Amen. Right? The fact that you could open your mouth, you should thank God. Amen. I mean, there's a you know, little story out there. This person's in the bus and sees this, you know, fair lady. Man, she's jealous. You know, wow, she's so fair. She has such a good, you know, appearance, countenance, get the good vibe. When the bus stop came. She stood up with a crutch, and she had no legs. She's like, man, I thank God you know, that I could walk with yes. two legs. And then this guy sees this young child you know, not playing with all their kids, right? And then he goes to the child, hey, you know, why don't you play with all their kids? Found out that he was deaf. So he thanked God that you know, he could actually hear, right? And he sees somebody you know, who's moving around, you know, helping everybody out. Wow, I want to be like that person. Right? Come to find out that person was blind. Even though he was blind, he was helping everybody. So you and I, think about it, during this Thanksgiving week, you know, every week should be a Thanksgiving week, yes. but especially Thanksgiving week, it should be a reminder to you and me that Amen. we really need to be a better thankful person. Amen. Because if we're not, how are we not different than the world, right? Yeah. I mean, what characterizes this world right now? Very ungrateful people. Ungrateful society, ungrateful nation, ungrateful, you know, universe. I mean, think about it. Everybody thinks that it's me, me, me. I'm always number one, yes. right? So point number one is that you have to be thankful because you're different from the world. You should show that you're different. I mean, you call yourself a bible building Christian, but you don't live a Thanksgiving life? Then shame on you. Don't call yourself a Bible-believing Christian. I can't be calling myself a Bible-believing Christian when all I say is I love this deep doctrine and all that stuff, but I don't even thank anybody. I don't even thank my wife, family, 
If I don't thank the simple things in life, the health, breath, I don't thank, I don't thank God for everything in my life, then I shouldn't be, you know, even called the Bible believing Christian. You too. I mean, you shouldn't be called a Bible believing Christian. You just, don't even call yourself a Christian in front of people. It's shameful. I mean, if you are that murmurer, if you are that complainer who complains about every little thing, man, you shouldn't be associated with a Bible believing church, Lord Jesus Christ, because all you're bringing is bad testimony. Yes. Just do your own destruction. Just say, I'm. I'm in Benny Hinn's church or Joe Austin's <laughs> church, you know, you know, T.D. Jakes or, you know, those prosperity, you know, you don't get your money, you complain, right? Yeah. That's not how Christian life is all about. Amen. Because Bible says in everything, give thanks. Yes, sir. This world, all they want to do is complain, 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 complain. Some of them are for right reasons. But as Christians, God has given you circumstance where you could give thanks to God for everything. Amen. I mean, there was a Scottish preacher. He's known to be a very, very thankful preacher. So this one of the congregation members told his friend, hey, let's go, hear him out. And then, okay, let's see how thankful he is. There was a crazy storm. There's flooding everywhere. And they barely made it, but there was no one else. You know? And then they asked the preacher, I mean, are you still thankful? You barely have anyone in the congregation. Weather is as bad as it gets, you know. Are you still thankful? And then, what do you think he said? I'm sure you guys could say the same thing. I thank God that every day is not like today. Right? You should understand what kind, whatever hardship that you're going through today, tomorrow, in the past, you should thank God that not every day is like that day. Yes. There's always better days ahead. Amen. I mean, above anything, you know, Lord's coming back. Yes. You're going to be in heaven. Woo. So better days are ahead of you. Yes. Man, why should you be complaining about, murmuring about? You should always think about children. You should always think about children who's in hospital. Amen. Think about what they have to go through. There was a girl named Christina. She had a cancer of nervous system. Okay. It's tough. Can you imagine? You can't breathe. You can't go anywhere because of, you know, the cancer that you have. So her birthday came, and she was asked, what do you want for your birthday? She said, I don't know. You know, I have two sticker notes, and I have this cabbage patch doll. She said, I have everything. And when your birthday comes, don't you guys always complain? Especially little ones. Mommy, Daddy. What are you going to get for me for my birthday? I gave you my wish list already, right? You know, where's my gadget, right? I mean, this kid who's going through cancer in her nervous system says, I have everything. I mean, you and I complain about everything. I don't have this. I don't have that, you know? Man, especially when it comes to food, people complain a lot. Think about kids in Africa. Millions of them, millions and millions, all they could drink is very, very polluted water. Yeah. Meat, forget about it. Right. They leave up of milk. Yeah. And then you complain, where's my chicken nuggets, right? I can't eat no vegetable. Where's my steak? Where's my pork chop? You know, where's my every, all, all of this great stuff? You know, instead of acting like a fool, you should be thanking God for anything, Amen. right? I mean, your parents want to, especially children, husbands, if your mom is giving you a good meal, just be thankful. Yes. Why do you got to always be like, oh, it needs more reason. I'm seasoning, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's too cold, you know? Then you get up and warm it up. Well, are you that lazy, right? You know, or help out. I mean, just this little thing just tells you if everybody in the world acted like everybody in the world, then I think the world would have been blown up already. Yes. But thank God, you know, God still gave us grace. There's still thankful people out there, very small percentage. And you should be that person, right? That one out of 10 
one out of 17, right? Just be that person who's still giving thanks to God for everything. You and I have to remember, every time I'm complaining and murmuring, not giving thanks to God, now, I let the devil win, obviously, yeah. but I am just like the world. I am no different. And you are a bad example to everybody around you, to your children, to your friends, to your grandma, grandpa, to your cousins. You shouldn't be complaining. You should always be thankful. Why? Because you're different. I'm different. You and I are peculiar people. Right. You and I, when we're standing next to the world, people should look at us and see that we're different. Yes. If we're the same, then you're just a chameleon Christian. Amen. What, I mean, what good is it? Yeah. yeah. Then you're like that person in Romans 8.13. You live after the flesh. I'm not going to see you too soon. Yeah. For too long. Because you'll be in heaven sooner than later. So, so point number one, right? Don't act like the world. You're different from the world. That's why you got to give thanks to God. Amen. And point number two, you know. I mean, since stars when there's no Thanksgiving, what is it? Well, what's the other important thing about Thanksgiving? There are reasons why you can't give Thanksgiving, right? And these reasons can't be your reasons. That's point number two. Watch out for these reasons. First one is you don't give thanks to God because it doesn't go your way. <laughs> How selfish you and I are. When anything, literally, from walking, sleeping, going to work, driving, when any little thing does not go our way or go your way, you become unthankful. Amen. I'm shaving in the morning. I cut myself. Man, what a horrible life I live in, right? They're like, man, I'm done with this day. You know, this is the worst day it's going to be. Right? And then you're driving. Someone cuts you up badly, and they give you the finger. Like, and you didn't do anything wrong. And then, but man, it didn't go your way. Man, so you're complaining. When things don't go your way, you know, give thanks to God. Why? Because the Bible says in everything give thanks. Right? I mean, as tough as it is, it is what the Bible says. Whether it's good or bad, you give thanks to God. That means if it, goes, if it goes your way, give thanks to God. I'm not sure how many times you give thanks to God when things go well. You complain to God when things... I mean, actually, you forget about God when things go well, usually. Because why? You want to get all the glory. But man, when things don't go your way, what happens? Ooh, you're just like the Israelites, you know, in the book of Numbers, Right? You're the Israelites that's, you know, described in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You start murmuring. You start complaining. Right? You just forget about Romans 8, 28, right? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are they call according to his purpose. Yes. Whether it's good or bad. Amen. So stop complaining when things don't go your way, you selfish person, right? I mean, you are so selfish that... When things go way in other people's life, you're so angry, you're so mad, you're jealous, and you're envious. That goes to another one, right? You don't give thanks to God because you always compare yourself to other people. You are you, right? We have two brothers, family, Sal, Sal, Oscar, Oscar. Same name, but they're different, Amen. right? They don't expect us to see them as same people because they have different characteristics and they have different set of minds. You are you. You are that sinner, if you're saved, saved by grace. Amen. Then don't compare yourself to other people, especially other Christians, right? You could get encouraged, admonished by them, but don't start comparing yourself to everybody else, especially when it comes to materialism, right? God gave him a house. I don't have a house. God gave her a nice car. I don't have a car, right? You know, God gave this person, that person. How do you know? I mean, what do you know about that person besides from seeing them at church here and there? 
Right? What do you really know? You don't know. Oh, it's all about speculation, guesses, gossips, right? Just mind your own business, right? Pray for others and just mind your business. If you're going to continuously compare yourself to other people and other families, then you'll never be a thankful person. Because there's always someone better than you. You know? You could ace every single test at your school, your valedictorian. But there's someone better than you, right? You could be a CEO of a company, but there's a better CEO out there, right? There's always someone better than you in this world. And there's always someone who's worse than you in this world. So think about it. Then stop complaining. And don't have self-pity parties either, right? I'm like, oh, man. Why am I living like this third world people? What are you complaining about? Then go over there. We, we have so many people who's going against, you know, freedom of our country. Get out of here, right? Just Amen. go to the places that you stand for. Yes. Yeah, all those communist countries, you know, authoritarian countries. Just go over there and protest. Then I'll give you credit. I'll give you thumbs up, right? If you go over there and complain and going through all this, you know, adversary and, you know, this mandate against women, especially women protesters, go over there. Where you, if you get rid of your, you know, hijab, you know, moral police comes and beat you up to death. I mean, that's exactly what happened in Iran. So be at those places, but do not damage, do not, you know, pollute the freedom that God has given to this country. You know, when the pilgrims came over, I mean, they thank God. That's how this country was founded. Then, in order for us as Christians to maintain that integrity of thanksgiving, we have to be giving thanks to God without thinking about other people. Don't compare. Stop comparing. Just thank God for whatever he's given to you. I mean, just counting all the blessings in your life should make you pray all night. From every hair, right, to every sound limbs that you have. You know, to all the organs that you could still use. Right. The fact that you could even use bathroom. Right. Thank God for it. Right. Don't you know there are so many people out there who can use bathroom right. without the assistance of a person or without the assistance of a machine? Right. You don't think about that, right? You know, when you have to go one or two, you're like, oh, it's just a natural thing. No, it's not a natural thing to a lot of people. So you should be thanking God. And another reason why, you know, you don't give thanks to God. Because when the trials and tribulation comes, the first thing you do is just complain to God. Lord, you know, I'm saying it from the standpoint of a person, you know, who has a loved one who's going through the same thing. You're like, you can't be like, Lord, why you give me this bad health, right? And don't. You, you people, like everybody sitting there, you know, don't start criticizing people when they're complaining about their health. They're going through their own issues. That's right. But as the person yourself, you know, the first thing you could do is complain to God for all the health issues that God has given you. Okay. And I'm truly sorry that happened. But there's reason, right? There is a reason. And because Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for good, and because Philippians says, I can do all things through Christ, and you can get closer to the Lord for sure. Amen. You have to make sure that God has given me because he wants me to get closer to him. Great. And because Bible says I could give thanks in everything, I'm going to give thanks to God. Amen. You know, even for this pain here, pain there, illness there. Amen. Man, it's really hard to get to that level of spiritual maturity. But you could once you start giving thanks. Right. It's like a, it's like a engine. Once it starts, it's gonna keep going, right. and then you could give more speed to it. You know. I don't know if this guy was saved or not. There was a guy named David Vicar, back in Oregon in the 1980s. He was a, I think, police officer. He got into an accident. And one of the nurses who's driving by stopped and helped him. 
and then you know he got he didn't die. And when he woke up, he asked people, "Where's that person who helped me?" No one could find the person. He was obsessed with Thanksgiving, so he put out a letter in a newspaper. I'm looking for this nurse. I'm that person who almost died, but you helped me, you know, save my life. I, we don't know what kind of real character he had, but I know one thing. He had obsession of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. He wanted to give thanks to that person. I mean, you and I should get to a point we're really obsessed about giving thanks to God about everything, Amen. for everything. I mean, literally everything, good or bad. I mean, you know, because a lot of the bad that's happening in your life, most of them, you brought it on yourself. Yes. I mean, let's just look at it, right? Your old ways of habits, you are, you know, ripping it right now in many cases, right? In those cases, you could still thank God. Right. Why? Because you could get right with the Lord and then go on with your Christian life. I mean, isn't that the greatest, you know, blessing that you have and I have? Even though we could mess up, even though we did mess up, we could still get right with the Lord and just continue. And whatever comes our way because of our sins, because you and I, you know, we reap what we sow, we should thank God. Thank God. You know, his word is true. Thank God. You know, I'm getting my just due, but I want it little, right? You know, little, little. I want to reap very little. I want to get right with the Lord. You get right with the Lord. And thank God for that. The fact that he's not punishing you harder than he should. I mean, think about it. The Lord is so just. He sends people to hell for our eternity. But as Christians, if you get right with the Lord, you confess your sins, you know, you still expect to pay for your sins. You have to because that's just God. You would understand that I could have been real bad. Right. It could have been worse than you could ever imagine. But because of God's grace, you know, he's lessened my pain. He lessened my tribulation. He lessened certain things in my life. See, that's, those are the things that you have to be, you know, thanking God for. So you have to be thanking God because you're different, right? Number one. You have to stop comparing yourself to others, right? You got to start thanking God when tribulation and pain and suffering come your way. Because the Lord went through every pain imaginable. I mean, think about it. But did he complain and quit? No. No. You, got, you and I got to learn. If you're going through any hardship in your life right now, Instead of complaining to God, instead of trying to, you know, not think about it or get rid of it out of your, you know, mirror or out of your front view, put it in your rear view mirror, because those problems are not going to go away. I'll tell you that. You go to the Lord. Ask the Lord to help you out. Why, why don't you go to the Lord? Amen. See, one of the ways to solve your sin of not giving thanks always, you got to pray more. You have to. I found out that, man, when I pray to God in certain situations, I can't really complain. Amen. I'm talking to an almighty God. I'm, I have my Lord in me. I mean, who am I to complain in that situation? But I seek his help. I seek his guidance. I seek his strength. I want him to, you know, really, really, I want Holy Spirit to fill me and then control my thoughts. That's how you become a thankful person, right? Don't just have the mind. You should, but you got to start putting it into action. How? By praying. I mean, it's just prime example is what? When you're eating, right? Meal. Wherever you are, you should give thanks to the Lord. It doesn't matter if you're at work. I give thanks to God before I eat. I don't care if all these unsafe people look at me. They pray to Allah. They pray to Mary. They pray to every single thing out there. I'm going to pray to my God. And I'm going to give thanks. They're like, oh, you look weird. I don't care. <laughs> or like I said, that point number two, like, I don't care. I don't need to compare myself to you. You know, 
if I've offended you, tough luck, because I'm going to pray. But funny thing is they don't tell that to Muslims who's praying five times a day, <laughs> right? They only do that to Christians out there. Double standard. Yeah. You have freedom to do that, right? Then do it. Give thanks to God. If you don't give thanks to God in everything, then what's going to happen again? You will not look on the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not. You're going to look at everything else. Yeah. I mean, looking unto Jesus. You have to continuously look unto Jesus. That's your solution, right? When I look at the Lord and what he has done for me, you know, through the word of God, and just in my life general, man, it should, I mean, I could talk to you about it all day and all night. Every one of you should have that type of testimony. It doesn't have to be forced. You know what the Lord has done for you. Amen. All your life. Right. Now and future in the past. Yes. That should give you more than enough time to give thanks to God. That's right. I mean, Dr. Okaman said it. And he was talking to one of the person. He's like, you know, Rockman, how do you know? You know, how do you know? Lord's there. Because he didn't want to believe the word of God. That's right. okay. <laughs> you said the wrong thing. So he explained to him everything that the Lord has done for him. Right. For a long time. Yeah. Everything. And through that testimony, I don't know if the dude got saved or not, but he, was, he knew something was different. Yeah. I mean, do you have that Thanksgiving testimony in you? Yes. Amen. It shouldn't be like, you know, I thank God for my salvation. Of course, that's it. You can't thank God for anything else in your life. Come on. Come on. I mean, your health. Yes. Every, every details of your health. Amen. All the days that you're supposed to die in this wicked freeway out there. Yes. Or on the road, right? All the times that when a crazy people would have came up and stabbed you. Oh, yeah. In this crazy world. I mean, all the times that you should have been, you know, Worthless, penniless, but Lord always provided your need. Amen. The fact that you have clothes to wear. Yes. You have clean air. You have yes. a toilet. Amen. Right? I mean, all these luxuries that you don't deserve, you have in life. You should be thanking Amen. God for it. If you don't do it, then what happens? You're going to see the same result that this world has turned out to be. Yes. Let's go to book of Romans. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. So as Christians, you already know the answer. And it's not a hard topic either, but it's something hard to do in our life. You have to give thanks in everything, no matter what. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. So what's wrong with this world? What's wrong with you and me? Romans 1, 21. The Bible said, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. You don't give glory to God, you don't give thanks to God, then this is how the world turns into. Amen. Right? Look at verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness to the less of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Amen. And likewise, also the man leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, man with man working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their heir, which was, which was me. We're in, the, we're in these days, right? Yeah. The results. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, all the homosexuality, the transgenderism, yes. ideology, gender, ide everything. Wicked. Why? Because when you don't give glory to God and you don't, if you're not thankful, that's the result. Yes. That's right. And don't think that's such a far out story in your life, Christian. No. Yeah. You don't give glory to God, if you're not thankful, you're going to go straight down the hills of all this sin. Yes. Amen. Man, 
There are, you know, homosexual Christians out there. Yes. I mean, there were straight ones. What happened? Yes. They stopped giving glory to God and they stopped thanking him. Amen. Right? When you stop thanking him, all the sins in there, it just explodes. Like, already inside of us, there are a bunch of sins that wants to control us and it come and just blow up because we have that old nature. Amen. You know what gives the start, gives that fire that it needs? That unthankful heart. Yeah. Just like Israelites in Numbers, we're not going to go there due to time, Numbers chapter 11, they're complaining about manna, Amen. heavenly food. Amen. Where's my fish from Egypt? Amen. It's like me complaining about, you know, when someone's giving me this best food in the world, hey, I want that junk food, you know, which will ruin my life. And we're talking about these people. And what was their result, right? Out in the wilderness, 40 years. Die as a, their carcasses will be in the wilderness. Can, couldn't even get to promised land because they're unthankful, Amen. right? I mean, if you trusted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you and I will go to promised land for sure. Yeah. We'll be in heaven. Amen. But you will have no rewards. Praise and then you won't have anything. I mean, what's, you, you're not going to have any crowns to throw at the yeah. Lord, right? Yeah. Don't you want to at least yes. glorify God and praise Him, yes. you know, with some yes. things to throw at His feet? Amen. In order to do that, you have to be thankful in everything. It's something that's very, very unnatural for us to do. So you have to, you know, kill your flesh each day Amen. and be thankful at each moment. Yes. Yeah. Regular. So conclusion, just think about your regular ways of doing life. And especially when you're dealing with everything that you see, right? Invisible things of God, right? The creations of the world. I don't know if you're thankful for God's creations, you should be, Amen. right? Yes. Because if God sent tornado or earthquake here, the right. first thing you're going to complain to God. Oh, God. But yes. instead of doing that, thank God for everything. everything. Think about your troubles. Think about your family. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. Forget about the past. You have your husband, you have your wife, you have your children. You're not going to change it. Right. Be thankful for them. Amen. Be thankful that they are your wife and your husband, yes. your children, your mama and your dad. Yes. Be thankful. I don't know. It's like uh, only time you thank your mom is Mother's Day. Only time you thank your dad truly is Father's Day. In between, you're entitled little brat. Where's my food? Where are you? I'm waiting for you. Pick me up at the Jane's house or John's house. You know, I'm late for the party, right? You know, hey, do this homework for me. I don't know. You're smarter than me. Like all these, you know, stupid complaints that kids do. Yeah. Get rid of it. Thank God that you have a godly parents. Amen. Nobody's perfect. But if they stand for the King James Bible, and then they want to strive to be a good godly parents, you should be thankful. Amen. Same thing with parents. You know, children, right? You can't have uh, unreasonable expectations. My kid has the brains to... Be number one at Harvard. When you know they don't. <laughs> but they're doing their best. Just be thankful for that. They're doing their best. Amen. If their best is C, it's okay. Amen. If their best is B, mine is okay. If they do their best, I know they're going to pass though. So kids don't say, you know, my best is D and F. It's not. You're not doing your best, right? No. You do your best, you're going to pass the class. Yeah. So do your best and be thankful. Don't expect your parents, your children to be someone that you want them to be. Yeah. Don't use your imaginative case. Amen. My husband, you know, I imagine him to be a CEO of a company. You know, we live in a multi-million dollar mansion. You know, husband, you know, my wife is the fairest of them all, you know, you know, best of all this. You know, like my children, the smartest, you know. No, get rid of all those worldly thinking. Yes. Just get rid of it. Just be thankful where they are and just do your best where you are. Everybody. everybody. Parents, children, you know, everybody has to just do your best where you are. And in order to do that, you have to give thanks to God in everything. Amen. You know, Bible says, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto man. 
How can you do that? I mean, people ask, how can you be sold out? How can you be gung-ho? How can you give your all to the Lord all the time? Why? Because you're thankful for, for what he has done for you. And I'll close with this. If there was a loved one who died for you, you were supposed to go to jail for life, or you're supposed to be executed in an electrical chair, but they came in and said, you know what? I'm going to take your place. And that was your mom, right? Or that was your dad. And then they tell you, you know what? Just remember what I did for you, and just let others know. There's actually a grace and mercy available to people. I guarantee you, if your mom or your dad did that for you, even if your best friend, even if your enemy did that for you, you're gonna, every time you meet someone, you're going to do it. Yes. You know? Hey, do you know what? Man, let me tell you a story. I was supposed to die. I was supposed to be executed, but someone took my place. Amen. Let me tell you about that person. You know, you're going to open your mouth and talk about that person all the time. But that person's you and me. Yes. Because Lord Jesus Christ, you know, if we were supposed to be executed and burned in hell for our eternity, yes. He saved us from hell. Thank you, Jesus. Shouldn't we be thankful for everything? Amen. Shouldn't we do our best for Him because we're thankful? Yes, sir. Right? That's what you gotta do. Don't sometimes we get into this trap. We do it to show to people we're pretty mature and good Christians. No. You do it because you love the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You do it because you're thankful. Yes. Then when it is pure and genuine, it's going to last. Amen. When it is just to show to people or just to, you know, keep your status in check, it will ultimately fail yes. sooner than later. So look at your heart tonight, Christian. Just think about it. Am I a, really, am I a thankful person? I mean, has sin taken up? advantage of me because I've been unthankful. Am I going to be thankful in everything from now on? Your answer should be yes. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, as Thanksgiving weeks here, we do need to look back and we do need to see where we are when it comes to Thanksgiving heart. We need to examine if we have acted like Israelites or the fools out there who feel so spoiled and entitled. Heavenly Father, just like what you said in your word, help us to be thankful and give thanks in everything, Lord. It can't just be words. Words are cheap. We have to show it in action. We have to show it in our appearance, countenance. We have to show it in our heart above all, Lord God. If we have to get right with you, as I know every one of us do for being unthankful, help us get right with you and become that Christian, that one out of 10 leper who always give thanks to you and give glory to you and do things because we're thankful to you. I pray that you bless everyone here and who's listening and who aren't able to make it. Whatever issues of people's lives are, I pray that each person will give thanks to you in everything. Bless this day, Lord. Bless the rest of the services. And above all, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.